Um, what is Kua's carbon footprint? 32,801. What? <laughs> CO, uh, kilograms of CO2 equivalent. But what's that? But what is kilograms of CO2 equivalent? So what CO2 equivalent is, is a metric to measure the various different gases that can contrib contribute to climate change and to um, pull the different um, various global warming potentials of each of those gases back down to the carbon dioxide equivalent. Um, so an example is that nitrous oxide, um, I think is about 30 times that of carbon dioxide and methane is about 290 times that of carbon dioxide. And so what, what it does is it then pulls both of those values back down to carbon dioxide uh, and then we can have this measure that can be comparable uh, across the board um, and can be used as a single, single unit. And that's the standard unit for measuring a footprint? Correct, yeah. Internationally recognised. Whoa. Yes. And Kua, so Kua has footprint of 32,801 kilograms CO2 yep. for an entire year of operations. Yeah. Which is pretty good. I know yeah. that figure might not mean um, much to yeah. many people out there, but yes, that is pretty good. Yeah. All right, awesome. <laughs> and how did, how did we get that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shift over this way. All right, so, so what's the process to getting a number like that? Yeah, so um, basically you need to know Greg Norris. But Greg Norris was very helpful for us. He works in the US um, at MIT on a project called Shine and he told us about um, the GHG protocol um, and we use a specific standard called the Product Lifecycle Accounting and Reporting Standard, mm -hmm. a bit of a mouthful, which <laughs> um, helped guide us through the process and make sure that we were ticking boxes um, and uh, on the right track. Mm -hmm. And he also told us about a free software called OpenLCA and we were able to take purchasing data, so the amount that Kua was spending on different parts of their um, operations, such as the shipping from Uganda to Australia, mm -hmm. and we were able to put that data into this software and then it would calculate the amount of emissions <laughs> that were produced from each operation and then also give us the single figure of the kilograms of CO2 um, equivalent for each of those operations. Mm -hmm. But what was really cool is that in OpenLCA you can look into the different inputs that it's um, using to calculate those emissions. Yeah. So this is really cool. You can kind of click this little down tab and it'll <coughs> pop up. So we're looking, an example is we're looking at the trucking. So that's the trucking of transporting the green coffee from Melbourne to Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, and a part of that, there's the things you'd expect, like um, obviously the petrol that's consumed during that trip. Uh, then it even goes into things like the materials used um, to make the truck and even the road um, as like a percentage based on that trip. Um, and then a really interesting one uh, we found was uh, we were scrolling through and then ice cream popped up. <laughs> <laughs> and we were a bit confused. We are looking at going, ice cream, what's that? We chatted to Greg. He said it all checked out. It all makes sense. And we, uh, I think what we concluded was that on average, uh, well, at least when they were doing open LCA, they assessed that uh, truckers on average are probably going to buy an ice cream on this trip from Melbourne to Sydney. Uh, and so it's that detailed and that comprehensive that they'll even include stuff like the behaviour of, say, the truck driver yeah. on a trip um, from Melbourne to Sydney. So, which is, yeah, pretty cool yeah. and very comprehensive and shows that a part of these processes, it goes super in depth into um, everything, well, not everything, but a lot of things that can contribute to climate change. As a cool. What type of ice cream would you say that they're probably yeah. buying? <laughs> got to be a Cornetto. Yeah. Cornetto. If it's one of the lemonade icy poles, it probably drop down significantly. Yeah. Kua would drop a couple of But the thing with this was um, using OpenLCA, that was only available to things um, with purchasing data, so data we had um, of Kua's spending. Uh, and also, it, uh, some of the Kua's operations didn't necessarily fit into the processes in which was available in OpenLCA. So we had we went back to Greg, um, and he provided us with. Um, Eco 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 <laughs> 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 um, so we gave uh, Greg this list of things that we wanted some more specific data on, or things that we couldn't calculate with Open LCA, and he went to Eco Invent to calculate some figures for us, and came back with um, things like the amount of kilograms of CO two equivalent produced um, when one liter of water is used, or one liter of petrol, or one kilowatt. kilowatt. Electricity, yeah. Um, yeah, and then we were able to multiply those figures that he'd given us by the um, data that we had on Kua to make sure that we were covering as much um, right. of Kua's operations as possible. Mm. Awesome. And then, hmm.
So to make it really accurate, yeah. <laughs> what we did was um, we overestimated wherever we were unsure okay. of things. Yeah. Um, but also because we're just university students and there are some limitations about um, the types of things that you can get data on, wherever we were unclear or thought that something might be a little bit inaccurate, we made sure that that was um, noted really clearly yeah. uh, so that we were being transparent. In yeah. The and, the and I think that's really important even um, in all of our spreadsheets and um, and like the assessment, we've always flagged, yeah, where we think the data is potentially a bit less accurate or uh, needs work. Yeah, exactly. In the future, so yeah. um, that's all there, and hopefully, will be accessible to. And we'll be doing it every year from and, and taking those things into account. Mm. Yeah, mm. improving and refining. And what about so? It's been a, a pretty great process for Kua, but what about? And we will like use findings from this work across it, like across the board. But what what about? Per, like, is there anything you would take away personally and apply to your daily lives from, yeah, from this project? I found it really interesting when we had all of the um, data on all of the different activities and the percentage that they were contributing to Kua's um, overall emissions, like how low things like shipping were, so the shipping that's um, happening between Uganda on a boat all the way to Melbourne. Uh, yeah, I found that really interesting. Mm. And then things that, unsurprisingly, the international travel yeah. when four members um, of Kua went over to Uganda, that was a big contributor. So, yeah, just like seeing how different things contribute and then using that knowledge to apply it to the decisions I make in my own yeah. life to be a bit more sustainable. Yeah, definitely. I think two things I learned. The first one was um, how in making these assessments, um, choosing your boundaries and choosing that um, process in which you want to do the assessment can be super influential. So say um, some companies might just do um, the specific part, like the, the specific product, um, and therefore the um, carbon dioxide equivalent value that they get might actually not be representative of their whole operations. So uh, as it is a new thing that's happening right now, um, I think just reading up and being aware of exactly what is going in to that carbon um, footprint value um, I think is quite important because it can vary yeah. across operations. And, and we were very comprehensive which we will account for. But definitely, definitely, yeah. Just on that point as well though, Kua did do a product footprint but um, it wasn't inaccurate for Kua because the coffee that they yeah. produce, the product that they produce um, is their entire business. They don't have yeah. multiple products yeah. so it was an accurate thing to do for Kua but if you're a bigger company producing multiple products and you just focused on one then it wouldn't be representative. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So an example I think we were, we were looking at was, um, was a kilogram of beef and so we were looking at how much a kilogram of beef would be as a comparison to look at how much co Kua's coffee was and we realised that this company was only looking at the agricultural aspects and then the transportation aspects of the meat. So they weren't looking at the office staff, the, the shipping of, not shipping mm. sorry, the flying <laughs> of um, workers all around, yeah. all around the world. And I think the other thing I learned was kind of, I guess, how, not easy, but how simple it can be to do. I think we, we did it in five to six weeks. We're two uni students. We had the help of Greg, but um, yeah, the GHG helpful. protocol is all public. Open LCA is accessible online. So I think anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. particularly big businesses that like are paying you. people. <laughs> uh, and yeah, like you <laughs> and you and consumers and anyone. Um, Kind of has this at the tip of the tip of their fingers, uh, in order for them to know just how much they're contributing yeah. to climate change, and, and that yeah. accountability, I think, for businesses and individuals, um, is really important mm. um, to start kind of taking responsibility for how much you're contributing to climate change, yeah. and to start mitigating and to start yeah, and having the conversation, yeah. understanding what the numbers mean. Yeah, exactly. it's great. It's so uh, it's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dickie. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Lockie. Thanks, Laura. <laughs>